Thank you. Good morning, church. God bless you. And God bless all those in Suntec City as well. Those who are in Suntec City, can you make some noise and wave to me so I can see you? Oh, yes, praise God. All right. Okay, are you ready for the Word of God? Are you ready? Okay, I'm ready too. All right, can I invite you to turn to the book of Acts, chapter 8. We have come to a, a, a very interesting chapters of this book. And uh, you have turned to Acts chapter 8. Can you say amen? Oh, I only hear a few. If you have turned to chapter 8 of the book of Acts, can you say amen? Amen. 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 Very good. Okay, today we are going to look at the first 25 verses, but we will read. We will read just the first 8 verses to give us some background for this uh, chapter that we're going to, we are, we are going to uh, study together. Acts chapter 8. And saw a proof of their killing him. On that day, a great persecution broken up against the church in Jerusalem. And all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Godly men met, buried Stephen, and mourned deeply for him, but Saul began to destroy the church. Going from house to house, he dragged off both men and women and put them in prison. Those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. Philip went down to a city in Samaria and proclaimed the Messiah there. When the crowds heard Philip and saw the signs he performed, they all paid close attention to what he said. For with strict impure spirits came out of many, and many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. So there was great joy in that city. Let us pray together. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you that you want us to trust in you with all our heart. Today we want to lean not on our own understanding, we acknowledge you in all our ways and abide ourselves in your word. Holy Spirit, we ask that you open our spiritual ears to hear what you want to say to us. We thank you that, Lord, you will make our path straight. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. My message title for today is Beyond Understanding. Would you say beyond understanding? All right. A woman to her husband. A woman is to be loved, not understood. And her husband shouted, Amen. And she, she asked him, why you say Amen so quickly? The husband responded, I fully agree with what you have just said. You are not to be understood, Right? That means you are beyond understanding. No, 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 no. The wife replied, you don't understand me, darling. What I meant is that you should love me more. Don't jump to any conclusion if you don't understand me. You know, knowing and understanding, indeed, they are very different. Charles Catherine said, there is a great difference between knowing and understanding. You can know a lot about something and not really understand it. Another quote says, understanding is deeper than knowledge. There are many people who know you, but there are very few who really understand you. And yet another quote says, there are some people who could hear you speak a thousand words and still not understand you. And there are others who will understand without you even speaking a word. Wow, this is the highest form of understanding. Treasures those who can understand you without your even speaking a word. These people are hard to come by. Amen? <laughs> All right, some like to understand what they believe in, 
others like to believe in what they understand. Do you agree? Is that true? And yet another person says, in youth we learn, in age we understand. Are you now learning or are you now understanding? It takes a lot of understanding to understand some of those quotes that I've just quoted. And uh, indeed, in life, there can be many things that are truly beyond our human limited understanding. Today, we have come to a very interesting chapter. Acts 8 is an interesting point in our studies of this book where the gospel begins to go out of Jerusalem to where? To Judea and Samaria. Until now, it has been centered in Jerusalem. Some time has gone by since the day of Pentecost. And now we see the unfolding of God's plan to send the disciples out into Judea and Samaria from Jerusalem. In Acts chapter 8, we can see at least two aspects of God that are beyond our understandings, beyond our human limited understanding. Number one, His wisdom is beyond our understanding. Number two, His power is beyond our understanding. In His wisdom, God has clearly outlined for us a divine program in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And He said to His disciple, but you will receive, receive what? Power when the Holy Spirit comes to you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Here we see the first phase of God's divine program recorded for us in the first seven chapters of Acts is now completed. It ended with the story of Stephen being killed or martyred by an angry Sanhedrin who could not tolerate the truth that he spoke and so stoned him to death. God is now proceeding with phase two of the program he has outlined for his disciples. But the kind of people that God used and the method he adopted in this transition can be beyond our human limited understanding. Number one, the people God uses. God used a man called Saul even before he became a believer. God used him to accomplish his divine program. Saul, who later became Paul, is a last person in Jerusalem you and I would have chosen to be the great apostle to the Gentiles at that time. We see in Acts chapter 8, verse 1, that he approved of the killing of Stephen, one of the seven chosen deacons recorded for us in Acts chapter 6. And in Acts chapter 8, verse 1, we, we, we see it was recorded for us that and saw a proof of their killing him. Who is this him? Stephen, right? So Stephen was also one of the seven deacons chosen. So in here we can see the book of Acts and, Ep and, and, the, Ep and the Epistles actually has given us sufficient details of Saul's early life. In, in fact, we, we, we know that he was born in Tarsus, in Cilicia. He was a Hebrew of the Hebrews. He was the son of a Pharisee and he became a devoted Pharisee. He was one of the most promising young Pharisees in Jerusalem, well on his way to becoming a great leader for the Jewish faith. And also, he was a Roman citizen we, uh, who was educated in Jerusalem under the tutorship of Gamaliel. And he was thoroughly trained in the law. And Saul's zeal for the law was displayed evidently in his persecution of the church. 
He really thought that persecuting the believers was one way of serving God. He did it with a clear conscience. He obeyed the light that he had at that time and God later gave him more light and he obeyed and became a believer later. And Paul was faultless. Saul at that time was faultless and blameless in his life as measured by the law. The stoning of Stephen's, which Paul approved, shows the extent of, to which he would go to achieve his purpose. Saul actually persecuted both men and women. He actually put them to jail and he actually entered into how houses and synagogues to destroy the church. He actually had, he had the, the believers in prison and, and beaten. And if they now renounce their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, they were set free. But if they did not renounce, Paul or the time Saul would kill them. He was a persecutor. He was a violent man. He acted in ignorance and unbelief. Is that sufficient for you to know that how terrible Saul was at that time? And Saul of Tarsus is the last person of Jerusalem you would have chosen. But God chose him. The words of sinners. And actually God chose him for his purpose. And uh, we knew that uh, Paul later became a great apostle to the Gentiles and became the key leaders in the last 16 chapters of Acts that was recorded for us, all the missionary trips that actually he made. And he was the, he's the author of more than 13 New Testament letters. You may think God will never use a murderer or troublemakers like Saul, but think again, you can be very, very wrong. God has used and often used difficult people and he will continue to use very difficult people to advance his cause. And today there are many difficult peoples, terrible people, terrible people in our midst whom God uses. Before I came to know the Lord, I always gave a lot of problems to the Christians. I persecuted them by asking them very difficult questions without the intent of wanting to know God. You know, last week I just had the privilege to celebrate one of our colleagues, Pastor Patrick Cole's birthday. And Pastor Patrick Cole, before he came to know the Lord, his spoken sentences were punctured not by commas and full stops, but by many, many four-letters words. He was a quick, tempered, and a big bully then. Eh? He is now sitting there, and he now became a well-respected and a compassionate pastor, serving faithfully in the special people ministry. And there are many, many more of such, you know, kind of people in our midst, from gangsters and gamblers to become disciples of Jesus Christ. From former drug addicts to gospel songwriters and singers today. And so on and so forth. Our God is all wise. The most unthinkable thing is that God can use you and me. And He can use ordinary people to be missionary for a day. Uh, just in case you forgot, you, you actually forgot that we had one missionary for a day not too long ago. And in December, again, we are going to send or scatter us to different corners of Singapore. And I will tell you, our senior pastors are very proud of you. In the last uh, MFAD missionary for a day, we have sent out a total of more than 1,000 MFAD groups. And there are more than 4,000 of you participated and responded to the call to be a missionary for a day. And on that day, actually, they were all together 
14 thousands of people that were blessed. Can we praise God for that? And not only that, out of the 14,000 that were blessed, there were 1, 000, more than 1,400 people make a first-time decision, of which more than 1,200, uh, more than 1,200 of them accepted the Lord for the first time. Can we praise God for that? <laughs> Hallelujah. So God can use you. Every one of us can be used by the Lord to be a missionary for a day. And this is only... A warming up. Two, we establish our 1728 cell groups. That will be the time that we will be sent to all Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Amen? Amen? Amen. So, God can use all kinds of people. If He can use sword, the sword that we, we know in Acts chapter 7 and 8, He certainly can use you and me. And uh, so, we want to just come before the Lord, trusting that God has got a divine plan and we are part of this overall divine plan. Can you say that to the one next to you that God can use you? And say to the other one that you are God's, you are part of God's overall divine plan. Amen, amen, amen. No need that the, the people that God uses is beyond our understanding. In fact, God always uses imperfect people in imperfect situation to accomplish His will. That's what Rick Warren said, and I fully agree with him. In God's wisdom, He not only uses people we least expect He will, he will use, and He often uses opposition to advance His kingdom. And we can see that clearly in Acts chapter 8. In the first five verses that we have just read, it says, On that day, a great persecution broke, broke out against the church in Jerusalem. And all except the apostles were scattered. So it was persecution that led to great scattering throughout Judea and Samaria. Godly men buried Stephen and mourned deeply for him. But Saul began to destroy the church. Going from house to house, he dragged off both men and women and put them in prison. Verse 4, those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. Philip went down to a city in Samaria and proclaimed the, the Messiah there. The above passage that we just read begins with persecution. And then it led to dispersion. And finally ends with proclamation. Persecution does to the church is just like what wind does to seed. The seeds are scattered. And when seeds, when seeds are scattered, they produce great harvests. Believers in Jerusalem were God's seed used. And persecution was what God used to transport these seeds in new soil, so they could bear fruit. Some went throughout Judea and Samaria, and others went to more distant mission fields. It was Bill Hyber in his book, Becoming a Contagious Christian. He gave an interesting formula. You want to know this formula? Okay, this formula is how we can have maximum impact to world evangelism. And it is MI equal to HP plus CP plus CC. What is HP? HP is maximum impact to world evangelism. What this formula may look like, one that is taken from a physics or chemistry textbook, it is actually a formula that contains God's strategy for reaching spiritually lost people. This formula shows us that to produce MI, which is maximum spiritual impact or influence, the church needs three very important factors. First factor is what we call HP. What is HP? HP is high potency. Believers are called to be what? 
the salt of this earth in order for salt to have the greatest possible impact. It must be potent enough to have an effect. If the salt loses its saltishness, how can it be mixed salty again? It is no longer good for anything. And the second factor is what? The second factor is CP, close proximity. For any impact to take place, salt has to get close to whatever it is supposed to affect. For example, if you want to apply salt on, the, on a fish to preserve the raw fish, what must you do? The salt must be in contact with the fish. Then it becomes kiam <laughs> Alright, so they must be in contact in order to preserve the food. So we can see close proximity is one very important factor. But we can see here God did not permit this persecution because His people were negligent and had to be forced to leave Jerusalem. That was not the case because we can see the weakness of the believers that was recorded for us in in Acts chapter 8, in fact, they, was, they were bearing fruit even beyond Jerusalem. So they actually had HP, right? So they have got HP, but what they did not have is CP, okay? Close proximity. So God, in His wisdom, used persecution and dispersion to increase their CP factor to give them maximum impact in Samaria. So our God is all wise, just like in the seven gates, the, the, the seven, seven gates or seven mountains. The, the Lord sent you to different gates so that you may be the disciples that God can use to transform the gate that God has placed you in. So we can know in a quote by A.W. Tozer, say, wisdom sees everything in focus, each in proper relation to all, and is thus able to work toward predestined goals with flawless precision. So here we can see true wisdom really sees everything in focus. Yes, go focus. And in fact, we can see that our God has got a divine plan. He's very clear with the plan and he's very focused. He has got a predestined goals and he will work out the details. And our God is still at work. And uh, we, we need to know that his plan is perfect. And another quote that says, not only could God's acts not be better done, a better way to do them could not be imagine. So our God has got a great divine plan and His plan is that He will use people and you will use means that sometimes, very often, are beyond our understanding. So what the devil may mean, many things happen in our life for bad, but God can th turn them around for His purpose. What was the end result or outcome of the great persecution? We saw that it led to great dispersion. We saw that it led to proclamation. And we saw that it led to great joy. It was in verse 6 and 7, it says that when the crowds heard Philip and saw the signs he performed, they all paid close attention to what he said. For with shrieks, impure spirits came up of many. And many who were paradise or lame were healed. So there was great joy in that city. You may ask sometime, if God is so wise and so good, how come He can allow so much suffering? We have read many bad news and terrible news very often, and it happens one after another. But I want to tell you that our God is in control. He could use things that may seem terrible to advance his cause, like the persecution that took place. Actually, it shocked me when I first came across a verse in Proverbs, the book of Proverbs, 
this verse actually gave me much peace and assurance because it gives me an answer to many incidents that happens in life that I could not comprehend. And after reading this verse, I can stop asking the many whys and I can choose to rest and hope in Him. For I know the answer to many of the questions that I have could only be understood when I meet the Lord in heaven. Would you want to know this verse? <laughs> yes? Okay, I don't know whether you missed this verse when we do our living life devotion uh, on, the, uh, on the book of Proverbs. Okay, it is taken from Proverbs chapter 16, verse 4. It says, The Lord works out everything to its proper end. Would you say amen to that? Amen? Amen. But what was shocking to me is that even the wicked for a day of disasters. With this verse, I can know that our God is sovereign. He is in control. There are many things that are beyond our understanding. But God is a God that is, that is full of wisdom. He is all wise. And we need to be patient. And it was Leonard Ravenhill that says, the early church was married to poverty, prisons, and persecutions. Today, the church is married to prosperity, personality, and popularity. Beware of prosperity gospel that rejects sufferings in life. For suffering could be God's ways or means to make you stronger and purer person. A.W. Tozer actually gave another quote that says, Wisdom, among other things, is the ability to devise perfect ends and to achieve those ends by the most perfect means. It sees the end from the beginning so, that the, so there can be no need to guess or conjecture. Indeed, our God is the great I Am. He is the Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. There's a modern parallel in what happened in 1949 in China when the nationalist government was defeated by communists. 637 China inland missionaries, they were forced to leave. It seems a total disaster. Yet within just four, four years, 286 about half of these missionaries had been redeployed in Southeast Asia and Japan and, and saw the kingdom of God being expanded. While the national Christians in China, even under severe persecutions, began to multiply to a total of 30, 40 times, or even more than 40 folds, the numbers before the missionaries left. The exact figures are not really known. So we can see that all God's acts are done in perfect wisdom. First for His own glory, and then for the highest good of the greatest number for the longest time. So let us learn to be patient, as God is not true with many of us yet. I don't know about you, are you now going through some difficulties, some challenges in life, or some problems that you don't understand? why you are facing some of these challenges. But what I want to say to you is that those problems that you have may not be punishments for sins or it may not be results of sins in your life. It may be God's catalyst to move you, to lead you into a new experience or it could be giving you some new understanding or it may be bringing you into a new opportunity to put it to work. Some of you may have got a new assignment in a new year and you are quite afraid. You don't understand why you are put into these new positions. And others, you may have got a new posting. You may send, send to a different countries for a couple of years. I want to encourage you to ask the Lord. Our God is all wise. He has got a purpose in your life. He will not waste your life. But wherever the Lord may have placed you in, seek His wisdom. And may the Lord lead you in wherever He may place you to be effective witness for the Lord. Amen? 
Amen? Amen. Persecution can come with different forms and intensity. And often it threatens you. You know, and you can truly overcome with hope and joy in the Lord. We can find encouragement in the fact that Jesus is still more powerful. And with this understanding, truly, it can bring joy to you. And this leads me to the second point, that our God is a powerful God. His power is beyond our understanding. Because not only our God is all-wise, He is also all-powerful. What He expects us to do, He will enable us through the power of God. All we have to do is to learn to appropriate His power needed for the assignment that God has given to you and me. So let me just highlight three of these powers. Number one, the power of the gospel. Philip was chosen as a deacon. Uh, Acts, in Acts chapter 6, we learn that. Just like Stephen, he grew in his ministry and became effective evangelist. God led him to evangelize in Samaria. And the Lord has given him the spiritual gifts. So let us go back to verse 4 and verse 5. Those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. Philip went down to a city in Samaria and proclaimed the Messiah there. We can see in here, verse 4, the word for preaching here means to preach the gospel, to evangelize. What the word in verse 5 means to announce as a herald. Philip was God's commissioned messenger to deliver his message to people in Samaria. There's power in the gospel. The power of God for salvation for everyone who believes in the Lord. It is God's dynamite for breaking down the barriers of sin and setting the captives free. So can we read together Romans 1, 16. Are you ready? 1, 2, and 3. For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jews and then to the Gentiles. We understand that believers are called to be sought of this earth. The time had come for the church on, that, that was on the move. The sought was now leaving the Jerusalem sought shaker, so to speak. And we can see that the disciples are now being spread over all Judea and Samaria. Just like the Lord has commanded in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. God knows we don't have power or we have got little power. And therefore, God gives us the gift, the spiritual gifts that is needed for us to complete the assignments. Philip was given the gift of evangelism. And this is to enhance, look at just now the formula, MI go to HP plus CP plus CC. So God actually enhanced the CC factor in Philip. He gave him the ability to communicate clearly the gospel message, hence contributing to his MI, maximum impact. So the Lord can give you the gifts of evangelism. And uh, as we participate in the MFAD missionary for a day in December, just in case you think God only, God only uses Philip and, uh, or Billy Graham to evangelize. I want to tell you that evangelism is not by persuasion or eloquence. That is why in MFAD, it is a warming up for all of us. And God say, apart from Him, we can do nothing. Okay? Apart from Him, we can do nothing. So as we go to the streets sharing gospel, God's power uh, of uh, there's power in gospel. So God will give us the power. I remember two of the very powerful moments when our church, so to speak, scattered our people to various parts of the, of the world 
One was the year of mobilization. How many of you remember? Can you wave to me? <laughs> okay, there are quite a number of you that remember the year of mobilization. When we, were mo when, when we mobilized hundreds of cell groups to do short term mission trips. And it was tough work, but God's power was manifested. His power was beyond our understanding. Every team that came back, you know, from New Zealand, Australia, Taiwan, China, Indonesia, and uh, South Africa, many, many places as they come back, they witness the power of, of God working among them as they are sent to all these places. And the second was the year when every zone was commissioned to plant a church overseas. And it was in that, that in initiative, we saw 50 churches planted through that initiative. There's great power in the gospel. I remember in that year, I led my zone to a city in Asia. And that was the first time I went to this city. This city is one of the darkest cities in that province. Prostitutions, dens of gambling, and uh, all kinds of immoralities. And we were there in a factory. And uh, there were 120 workers there. The boss of that factory was from Hong Kong. When we were there for that meeting, she cried because we were her prayer answer. She prayed for five years for that event to take place. And we, and we are there, I led a team, and we are there for that event for the very first time. And Holy Spirit was working very powerfully. And at that meeting, even during the times of worship and when we are presenting the items, we can see the tears of the 120 workers was this flowing. We, can, we, we saw the power of the Holy Spirit moving so powerfully. And by when a time we preached the Word of God, guess how many of them said the sinner's prayer? All of them, praise God, you are right. 120 of them raised their hands. The rate of salvation is something that is beyond our understanding because of the power of God that was manifested there. And when they raised their hands, I got to ask them to put down your hands, put down your hands. Let me explain again. I just want to be sure they know what decision they, they actually have made. So all the 120 of them raised their hand again. And I explained again the, 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 the real reason, I mean the what is the meaning of, of, of coming before the Lord in repentance and accepting the Lord Jesus as a personal saviour? And when and I, I, I ask those who are truly willing to follow the Lord Jesus all the days of their life to come forward. And every of them came forward. And after that event, we had the basic equipping, and more than half of them completed the basic equipping more than 60 of them. And in that weekend, a church of 60 over people was birthed because of the power of God. Can we praise God for that? <laughs> Hallelujah. So there's power in the gospel. And here we can know Philip not only declared God's power, but he also demonstrated God's power by performing miracles. Both Stephen and Philip did signs and wonders by the power of God. So not only there's power in the gospel, there's power of healing and deliverance. Over here, the emphasis here is on the word of God. The people gave heed to the word because they saw the miracles performed by Philip. And by believing the word, they were saved. God makes the early church depend not upon the apostles. In fact, the apostles were in Jerusalem, but the rest of them were scattered to Samaria. So we can see that it is because of that that the disciples received the gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed to each of them. 
as they were scattered, and uh, we can see that these were all ordinary Christians like you and me, but they were never discovered their gifts if they had not been launched out and put to work. So God used persecution to place them in circumstances where they began to develop the gifts that God has given to them. And it was the gift of witnessing, the gift of health, gift of wisdom, knowledge, teachings, prophecies, and many, many other gifts. It's just like many of us who conducted encounters in various parts of the world, in Malaysia, in China, in Philippines, in Taka, and uh, we witness the power of God manifested. And in Malaysia, recently they just had uh, an, an anniversary service. And this medium, it was in our encounter, they actually received the Lord and he went to various cities of Mal Malaysia to proclaim that Jesus Christ is his Lord. Can we praise God for that? <laughs> Hallelujah. So we must step out in faith to see the power of miracles being manifested. So great persecution plus the preaching of Gospels resulted in great joy. We see that Luke actually emphasizes to us that the people, they were all ordinary believers. And, and he emphasized the joy of salvation. The people of Samaria who heard the Gospel and believed they were delivered from all kinds of sickness. They were delivered from demonic control. And more importantly, from their sins. No wonder there was great joy. So it was great persecution that led to great joy. So if you say, yeah, in the new year, I've got a lot of work. You know, because of the, the added responsibility, I cannot serve the Lord. I cannot be CL. Then I do not know what kind of logic is that. Is there a joy of salvation in our hearts? Is there a joy of seeing many coming to know the Lord because of God's power that is manifested in our midst? Because our God is an all-powerful God. It is a privilege to serve. It is a privilege to witness the power of God being manifested so that in this missionary for a day, I want to encourage us as we go out to the streets, let us move with the power of God, seeing that God Yes, that we are used by God to bless the communities, to see that many are ushered into the kingdom of God, even during this Christmas festive. So we can see Rick Warren actually make a statement. He says, a church health is measured by its sending capacity, not its sitting capacity. So in this December, let us see how many of us are being sent to be missionaries for a day as a warming up. Do you know why we, it is so important for us to establish the 1728 cells? The secret is that once these cells are being established, it will be the time for us to be mobilized, to be sent, to be God's witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Amen? Can we praise God for that? Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So church, this December is yet another warming up for the greater things to come. God's power is manifested in His gospel. It is through healings and deliverance. And there's power of transformation. Our God is an all-wise God. He is powerful. His divine plan is to see transformation take place in us personally and also in the city. God expects that, and He will enable us. We often look to the external, but God looks into the transformation of our hearts, and God is going to give us that transformation power. And He knows the hearts of men and women, and we can receive the transformation power from the Lord. And God do not want us to be fake Christians. He wants us to be authentic believers. Do you have joys that is unspeakable? As you are sent to the streets to share the word of God to those who have yet to know Him, are you sharing with great excitement? Yes, you may be fearful, but it is the Lord that empowers us. Let us appropriate the power of God you know, in our life so that we can be effective witnesses for our Lord Jesus. In Acts chapter 8, 
verses 9 to 25, it recorded for us that Peter and John, after hearing that Samarian had accepted the word of God, so they went and prayed for the new believers to receive the Holy Spirit. It was there that we were told, Simon, the, the sorcerer, tries to buy the ability to give the Holy Spirit to others. And Peter rebukes him. In Acts chapter 8, verses reading from, from verse 20, Peter answered, May your money perish with you because you thought you could buy the gifts, the gift of God with money. You have no part or share in this ministry because your heart is not right before God. Verse 22, Repent of this wickedness and pray to the Lord in the hope that He may forgive you for having such a thought in your heart. For I see that you are full of bitterness and captive to sin. Church, here it shows how close a person can come to salvation and still not be converted. Simon the sorcerer heard the gospel, saw the miracles. In fact, he, had mir- he has got power, but he saw the, the, the power that's demonstrated by Philip. He know that that power of God is greater. And he even accepted the Lord and he, pro- he, he gave a pro- pro- profession of faith in Christ and was even baptized, but he was never born again. He was one of Satan's clever counterfeits. And had Peter not exposed the wickedness of his heart, Simon would have been accepted as a member of the Samaritan congregation. Simon's heart was not pure. What was his basis of faith? He did not desire the word of God, but he only desired the power he saw. He did not believe with all his heart. So church, today as we know that our God is all wise, all powerful, let's come to the Lord with a pure heart. Let's come before the Lord and have God truly transform us so that we may become effective witness for the Lord. I want to invite the musician to come to the stage. As I share one final verse, as a closing, as an encouragement and as a challenge to all of us as we receive the power from above, knowing that God is going to release upon you the transforming power. Just like the testimony that we saw just now, Peter received that transforming power and that, that led to conversion. And that we can see the whole family being restored. So church, you are facing challenges in life. Come before the Lord because these challenges could be a means for the Lord to purify you, to strengthen you so that you have got a new beginning. And the two verses I'm going to share is actually taken from Romans chapter 8, verse 28 and 29. 28 is a verse that we all are very familiar with. It says, "And and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. So when we read this verse, we say we give thanks to the Lord for all the good things. We are thankful to the Lord. And when we come to challenging moments, we are able to say God is in control. Even in those difficult moments, God has got a purpose. So fear not. But what I want to bring to your attention is really verse 29. Verse 29 says, For those God foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Verse 29 outlined to us the very purpose of God is to see that you and me be transformed into his image. Whatever you may be going through, we can give thanks to the Lord because all things God works for the good. But what is the purpose? The purpose is so that to bring you to the point 
whereby you will conform to the Lord more and more. So I want to bless you today. Why not respond to the Lord? Knowing that our God is an all-wise God, He's all-powerful, but most important is that the transforming power of God will be in us so that we can be effective witnesses and we can have maximum influence and impact to this lost world. God is, God's wisdom is beyond our understanding. He has given us His Word. So today I want to challenge you to just apply the Word of God, apply His teaching, even in the darkest moment of your life. God's power is beyond our understanding, but we can appropriate His power. We can move in the fullness of God, the fullness of Holy Spirit, and be His witnesses everywhere that the Lord sent us to. God is all wise and He has got a divine plan for each of us. So let's be transformed into His image and not be a fake Christian. Indeed, today as I share the word, I just feel that God is reminding us this power in the gospel. And I know many of you, especially those who may be here for us with the first time or second time, or you may have come a few times or you have not made a personal decision to receive the Lord Jesus as your personal saviour. Today, I'm going to invite you to open your hearts to receive this God who is all wise, who is all powerful. Do not let those fake Christians prevent you from coming to the Lord because our God is all wise. Our God is all powerful. So can I invite you to right now Close your eyes. Bow your heads. I want to give you an opportunity to receive the Lord Jesus, to appropriate His power and know that He's all wise, He's in control. And most of all, you know that God loves you. It is not by coincidence that you are here today. So in a moment, I'm going to lead you into a prayer to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. And as I as I pray the prayer, I want you to repeat after me. Today, open your heart. Receive the Lord into your life. And this is, this is how you pray. You say, Dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus. I confess that I'm a sinner. I confess that I'm a sinner. I open my heart. I open my heart. To receive you. To receive you as my Lord and Savior. As my Lord and Savior. Thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you for dying on the cross. For me. For me. Thank you for cleansing me. Thank you for cleansing me. With your blood. With your blood. I choose to walk with you. I choose to walk with you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. You are the all-wise and all-powerful God. You are the all-wise and all-powerful God. Help me to be an overcomer. Help me to be an overcomer. In Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Let's continue to close our eyes and bow our heads. I know a number of you has prayed this prayer in a moment. I'm going to count to three. I'm going to invite you to raise your hands so that I can pray for you. Whether you are seated here or in Suntec, at the balcony or below, at the count of three, I'd like you to raise your hands and I want to pray for you. So wherever you may be seated, I'm going to count now. One, two, three. Raise your hand. Yes, yes, I can see your hand. Praise God. I can see your hand. Praise God, brothers. Yes. Yes, those at the balcony. Yes, lift all your hands high, high up. Hallelujah. Any more? Yes, I can see your hand, brothers. Praise God. Praise God. Any more? Any more? Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day that you can, you can approach the throne of grace with confidence. Any more? Raise your hands. Yes. Yes, lift up your hands. Yes, praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Father, you see these brothers and sisters who have raised their hands. Yes, today they have made a decision to receive you. Yes, as their Lord and personal Savior. Father, bless them with your power with your transforming power in their life so that they may be able to grow from strength to strength, so that they may be able to know you and become a blessing to others. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Can we all rise together and let us give thanks to the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 There are quite a number of you who have raised your hands. In a moment, I'm going to invite you to come to the front. And even if you have not raised your hands, but you say, Pastor, you know, I, I have decided to follow the Lord Jesus, having heard the message. Or perhaps in the small group meetings, you have come to know the Lord, but you have not had a chance to come in front, you know, in, in a meeting such as this. I'm going to count to three. I'm going to invite you to come forward. We as a church, we are going to pray for you. We are going to bless you. I'm going to invite you to bring your belongings and come to the front. Huh? So whether here or at Santa, at the count of three, could you come forward? I'm going to count now. One, two, three. Let us welcome them. Yes, you come. Yes, you come. Yes, brother, sister, come. Yeah, you come. We wait for you. Praise God. Brothers, you come. Yes. Yes, come. Come, we wait for you. Praise God. Praise God, yes. Come. Come, those at the balcony too. Yes, come. Yes, come, we wait for you. Praise God, come. Yes. Church layers, you all come then. Yeah. Yes. Hallelujah. Can we all raise our hands? Let us just bless them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we want to bless these brothers and sisters who have taken the step of faith as they open their hearts to receive you. Today, we ask that you be with them. We ask that your presence go with them. Father, we ask that you bless them in their work, in their family, in their relationship so that they may know you and they will make you known. So Father, be with them. Continue to, to strengthen them. Bless them with success. Bless them with an abundant life so that they can live a life uh, and become a blessing to many. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Can we now invite you to follow our pastors to one of the rooms that we have spent some time with you. Church, can we welcome them? Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In a moment, we're going to worship the Lord. And our intercessor actually have released some words for, for the congregation today. And the word released is that I saw a vision of a barren land. Some of you feel that your life is like a barren land. There's no life and it seems to be abundant. But God is wanting you to come back and let the breath of life enter into this land and fill with God's presence and God's power so that this land may become a fertile land and fruitful. So if this word is for you, you may come to the front. A man here is searching to know who God is. God cannot be defined by your understanding. Come and learn to rest in Him and put your hope in the Lord. God ha God's hand is not too short to save. For some of you, you may be facing a difficult situation and it's, it may seem to be very overwhelming. But God's power God's grace is sufficient for you. So if these words are for you, you may come forward you know, you know, as you worship the Lord. And then I will release, humble yourself therefore under God's mighty hand. He will lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. 
Uh, God also wants to restore broken relationship for those in marriage. A word release that your spouse has got a very differing view with you. And right now, you are having some tension over this very important decision. The Lord wants you to come and surrender to Him. And uh, for those who have got new assignment, new posting the new year, God is going to empower you wherever you may, you may be sent to. And uh, for some of you, you may still have got some struggle in your, in your, work, in your walk. God said, don't be a fake believer. Come and receive the power of God. Come and have a pure heart and come in repentance so that you may be purer, you may be stronger as the Lord rebuilds you. So can we worship the Lord and if those words are for you, you come to the front. Yes. Father, we want to thank you that you are all wise God and you are all powerful. And in the name of Jesus, I want to bless you that in this Christmas season, the Lord will use you and set you apart for His glorious purpose. I ask that the Lord empower you. Yes, the Lord equip you with the spiritual gifts so that in this month, yes, in, in this Christmas season, yes, you will be used by the Lord to be effective witnesses to our Lord Jesus Christ. And that the Lord will grant upon you the power, yes, to, to deliver, to release healing so that we can see many will receive the blessing from above through you. So the Lord be with you. His grace is sufficient for you. The Lord bless you and the Lord let His face shine upon you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 The Lord bless you. You may be dismissed.